Hello, my name is Daniel Abba. I am a multimedia consultant. So the video you're about to watch is a typical training session of uh, one organization that had a need to better improve the skills of their multimedia team. I organize these trainings from time to time when I'm contacted by organizations, be it religious or corporate. Uh, let's be honest, it's content that is driving conversations these days. So if you're not playing that game at the highest level, there is definitely something that you're losing. Watch this video. I'm sure there's a lot that you can learn that will help your team to be able to increase the quality of their production. What I do is to organize these trainings to evaluate your current setup. I evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of your teams and I help you to be able to um, make the right decisions, give the right kind of training to your team members as well. Uh, this particular class that you're about to watch went on for about nine weeks. So there are many different videos that I'll be sharing with you from this class that I'm sure will be useful for you. I've been in the industry for over a decade. I've produced content that aired on Netflix. Uh, I've produced content also that I've aired on CNN, Al Jazeera, and I've worked with a lot of high profile clients, which you would see in my profile. Uh, so I, I, I bring to the table a wealth of experience that I believe will be very useful for your team. I see a lot of organizations trying their best and I have to commend them, but there are key things that they are missing. So that's what informed my decision to put this masterclass together so that I can help you shape your team to give you specifically what it is that you need for your content to stand out. So you don't want to miss out on this. The content I'm putting out here is free. You take advantage of it, share it with your team members, let them watch it. But then if you need me, to speak with your team, to train your team members, to evaluate your current setup, to improve your online engagement. Give me a call. My contact details are in the description of this video. You can also send me an email and let's, let's, let's start a conversation. And I believe that it will be worth your while. So enjoy the video. Thank you. I actually got, um, got him on board because of the recommendations I heard from him. I heard about him from Agape. Um, we've all seen that Agape service and we all seen how they are run. And we all seen how Gap was able to thrive during the COVID times and everything. And I found out that this gentleman was always responsible for that. Um, so we reached out to him, and by God, we were able to get him here. Able to get him here. Um, his well-tested and refined methodology, methodology builds a lasting framework that sustains the production of engaging content under the right conditions, operated by a well-equipped media team. So that basically, that's why we are here. And he has this mantra that that's a believer of the gospel and mission of Jesus Christ. He believes that it's in the will of God to take the gospel to the people of the world, wherever they may be found, and that includes online. So we reached out for, to him. We found him. We've engaged him for six months, back and forth, back and forth, but we finally made it. And by God's grace, he's here today to come and speak to us. So if it's okay with the team here, could we all put our hands together as we welcome to the four, Mr. Daniel Edem Abba. Could we just put our hands together as welcome? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. The cool-looking dudes are sitting over. Not that those sitting are not cool-looking, but I would really love for all of them to come here. <laughs> I, think, I think I would love for everyone to be in one place so that we can have more of a discussion rather than a lecture. I would love for this to be a discussion rather than a lecture because I believe that in one way or the other, we are all professionals in one field or the other. Yeah, if, if you could, if you can, I mean, you can hear me, right? Everyone can hear me. We're using microphones, so everybody can hear me. Anyway, boss, thank you for that introduction. I, for a moment, there, I was like, who wrote that? <laughs> but anyway, so my name is Daniel. Um, I'm a multimedia consultant, originally NAFTI trained, but uh, I also did a lot of work uh, on myself to full a lot of great producers around and see what I could pick up along the line. I think I've been in the field for a little over 12 years. I'm very young. Don't, don't let that 12 years, then you start doing plus and minus. It's okay. So if 12 years old, maybe it's like 42. No, 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 I'm not 42. <laughs> One of the areas that I find that we most often don't prepare before we start work is in the media team, which if we started doing would solve 80% of our problems regardless of the gear we have. Imagine the pastor doesn't prepare and he comes to church to come and preach. Even if he remembers some of the things he has been saying for years, after a while, you will start to notice that our man of God is no longer preparing these days. He just comes and then by inspiration, he wants to say something. And I feel that when we approach the media work like that, after a while, it becomes obvious. I want this to be very conversational. I'm not going to use any slides today because I want us to talk to each other. I am new to ARC. Uh, like my boss said, uh, we've been engaging for about six months, a little over six months, but 
I don't think I still know everything about ARC just yet. And I want to know ARC from the media team's perspective. And I'm glad that we are all very young people. Yeah, I think the oldest person here is Rashid. <laughs> it's interesting to hear all the things I'm hearing. I want to touch a bit on what um, she said concerning Jesus using what was available in his day. Who knows why Jesus went for a donkey instead of a horse? Have you ever thought about it beyond the procession? Beyond the uh, whatever? Beyond that, why a donkey and not a horse? Could have been a camel, anything. Why a donkey? I think he was fulfilling scripture. The one that says, see, your something comes riding on a, on a what, donkey, the son of, like the foal of a something. It was in scripture. So he being the word of God had to fulfill scripture. Okay. He was fulfilling scripture. One of, one of the reasons. One of the reasons, but... When you look at horses and their stature and everything, don't you think that even in the scripture they should have said he was riding on a horse instead of a donkey? Think about it. She was talking about Jesus using what was available in his day, but not just everything. What worked? You see, if you dare slap a horse, he will kick you. And Jesus knew he was going to be riding through a crowd and people will be touching the animal. A donkey is slow to anger. So if you mess with a donkey, it will take a little bit more for them to start kicking you. Jesus was concerned also about the crowd. Yes, he was fulfilling scripture, but he knew what to pick to be able to make that event not turn into a disaster. One of the things I've come to realize is that most of us that work in the media in church, and this comes from my experience talking to different people, we are there because nobody is doing it. But what I have learned over the time is that it can become your calling. It can become your calling. And it is one of the most powerful spaces to work in right now in promoting the gospel of the kingdom. Whenever I wake up in the morning, and I go to church very early. In fact, I, you won't sleep in my house. And at 4 a.m., you are not in the bathhouse getting ready to go to church. If I don't hustle you, my wife will hustle you. You have to be in church early. And whenever I'm going to church, there is one thing I am thinking about. That someone is going to turn on their cell phone, their TV, whatever device they're going to be watching service from. And it's going to be because of me. They will not see me on the screen. They will, never get to, they, they will never get to know my name. Ever. But because of me, they will hear the gospel. That's why I go. I may never hold a microphone and preach anywhere. But that is why I do it. That is the reason why I've been doing it for God knows how long. That's why I do it. That because of me, someone probably sitting in the airport waiting to catch a flight will go online and see a service that is live and they will partake in the service and they will receive a blessing or they will give their lives to Jesus. Coupled with a number of times. You know where I fellowship? The man of God is a healing minister. The countless messages you see online are of people receiving healings just from watching an online service. Naturally, people give credit to the man of God. But me at home, I'm so happy. When I see that, I'm like, so here's what would have happened. If I didn't go, probably... Live stream would have had issues because I was not there. And then that person would have missed their healing. How would I feel if Jesus would ask me about it? That's why I do it. That has been my motivation from day one. That's why I do it. Because the gospel must go. The gospel must go. By any means necessary, the gospel must go. Someone was crucified upside down for the gospel. What's your excuse? Someone was crucified. Someone was fried in oil. I don't want to talk about it. Some of the images are gory. What's your excuse? For me, that is why I do it. If you ever asked me, why do you work in church? I can't find a reason beyond this. Yeah. One man of God who I helped create his uh, online content. He's been my friend for many years, so I, I help him create his online content. One day, whilst we're in my studio recording, he, he, he stopped and he, will, he started asking me questions. Dan, Charlie, you are all, every time you are behind the camera, you are doing it. What, what, what at all are you looking for? What, what, what are you looking for? Because, Charlie, people want to be known. People want to be seen. You, you, you've, since I have known you, you've been in the background. What is your motivation? <laughs> and that was the same answer I gave him. I, I, didn't, I don't even think about the answer. It just rolls off my tongue because it has to be done. Someone has to hear the gospel. And if I am the facilitator of that, by the grace of God, I would do it even when I'm sick. 
There are days when I'm in church and I know that Charlie, your body is breaking down and I have to rest, but I know I can rest when service is over. So I'll see the work through. It is not easy. It's not easy. I'm fortunate to have had film training and to be mentored by great producers and all of that. But when you work in a church space, you work with people who don't have any of that training. And they just come to church and they, they, they just serve in the department and you're going to ask them to go and stand behind the camera or something. And you would have to deal with that. Knowing what you know and being motivated by what you are motivated by. And you have to manage that. And sometimes it can be very stressful, but I do it. Like she said, when she watches online content from probably the US or Europe, wherever, and she watches her own, the, the gap is, is very wide. And some of us have been on one mission. Let's bridge that gap. Let's bridge that gap. If you look at the, the amount of money spent to produce cinema content that people will queue and sometimes they stampede at the mall to go and see those movies. And then we, we consider all the excuses we have when we have to invest in promoting the gospel, it makes me sad. It makes me sad. I always say this, that the devil knows how to keep people occupied by the screen. The devil knows that. And he has found out that it is the easiest and the surest way to get his message across. And he's doing a very good job at it. In fact, Satan has an annual budget for promoting his gospel if I can call it a gospel. He has an annual budget for that. He has people he has trained for that. In fact, he's even looking for some of us to use because of our skills. He doesn't care if you go to church. If he can use you, he will use you. And he is not relenting. He has created armies for his gospel, in quotes. And he's not stopping now. He's not stopping now. You see what's happening in Europe today where churches are being turned into skating arenas and nightclubs and event centers? How long do you think that will be before that will be Africa? Yes, we, we seem to be in the best place in time right now when it comes to ministry. In fact, the, the churches in Europe, when they tend to look at Africa and what we are doing in ministry right now, they are amazed by it. And they want to come back here, even though, well, it looks like they brought the gospel here. You can say that, even though the gospel has been in Africa for over a thousand years. That's a conversation for another day. But you can say, yes, they brought the gospel here. Today, when they look at how their churches are struggling to even sit 50 people for a service, forget about those fancy ones you see online with an auditorium of about 50,000 people plus. That's a drop in the ocean compared to what we are doing in Africa right now. But some time ago, if you are somebody that follows church history, if you saw Billy Graham's crusades, who has ever watched a Billy Graham crusade before? Anybody? You've ever seen a Billy Graham crusade? Do you know Billy Graham? You know, have you ever seen a Billy Graham crusade? It's incredible. How many times today do you see a man of God being invited to the White House to go and speak to the president? Hardly. But Billy Graham and those people, they made those things possible in those days because they had influence. Today here in Africa, the church seems to have that kind of influence right now. But the things that caused the church in Europe to become what it is today, gradually they are coming to us. You just turn on your TikTok, you get what I mean. Young people engage in all kinds of things. When I open TikTok, here's what I'm thinking. How can we replace that nonsense they are watching with something that will actually help them develop? That's all. You said something interesting to me when we we're talking at the back. He said that for ARC, he feels it's, it's content because you may have all the skills and everything that is needed to package the gospel and send it out there. But sometimes the content does not allow for the engagement you are looking for. It's not, it's not, it's not a lie. I think I've, I've, since I started engaging with uh, Nanaya, I've watched, I've watched a bit of your online services. And I can agree with you to some extent. But you can change that. You don't necessarily have to influence what they are preaching. That's not your job. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to influence anything that is coming from here. But you can change that in a way. You can do just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I want us to read Luke chapter 5, verse 1. If you have a Bible, help me read Luke chapter 5 from verse 1. Let's see what it says. If anybody, anybody can read it, anybody can read it. 
Anybody can read it. I want to show you another typical example of Jesus using the technology available in his day. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Ever wondered, before I even get to what I want to ever wondered how Jesus was able to pull crowd like that? Who has started watching The Chosen? Who is watching The Chosen? That series, you, you're watching it. You realized when he went into town to heal, I think on a Sabbath, and you are behind. Oh, okay. Then I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> Let me discipline myself not to spoil it for you. Please watch it. Please watch it. I think the... the basis of that series is to put a human face to Jesus' ministry. Ever so often when we watch the Jesus movies and series on TV, it's about how glorious a man he was. Don't get me wrong, the chosen is not making him into something he is not. But he's making him more relatable, I think. That's what I get when I watch the chosen. He's making Jesus more relatable. Um, even though his time was set in 2,000 plus years ago, I, I remember I seen her hey, in fact, let me discipline myself, not to spoil it for you. Then I will not talk about the chosen today. When you, have, when you have gone far, we'll discuss. Maybe in private, then we'll come and tell them. Okay. All right. So, crowd is gathering. Jesus feels pressed. Wherever he is, there is crowd. Because Jesus was an attention seeker. In fact, if he hears me say this, he will not be offended. Jesus was an attention seeker. The man had a mission to spread his good news. Case closed by any means necessary, including provoking the order of the day, going to heal on the Sabbath, which he knew before he did, that if I do this one, these Pharisees, they'll come and talk. What do you think he was doing? Attention. So he's by the river. He's by the lake. That's what the Bible says. And the crowd is pressing against him. And then he spots two boats so that there is, they don't trample him, whatever. He says... Simon, push the boat small. Let me get inside and you push me into the water small. When I read that scripture, two things came to me. This was about a few years ago. Jesus could have found anywhere and said, follow me, let's go to this side and go and talk. I'll show you another place in the scripture where he does that. But he chooses to go on top of the water and speak from there. Why? Who knows why? Apart from trying to prevent the crowd from, yes, who knows why? Good. Acoustics. Yes. Yes. You know, when we read that scripture in church, all we get is that Jesus was just trying to save commotion. So once he's in the water and people cannot press against him too much, then everybody will have somewhere to sit. But there was another reason. And Jesus was a very smart guy. He knew that if I am on top of the lake and I'm talking, the wind blows in this direction. Everybody will hear me. He was using the technology in his day to his advantage. Personally, I believe that if Jesus belonged in our day, he would probably own like two or three TV stations. The man came to the world to spread good news. And how do you spread good news in today's world? In today's world, if Jesus is passing by, nobody is coming out to come and see you. Everybody goes online to check what is going on outside their house. Isn't it amazing? Today, when they say Choboy, everybody is checking out. Choboy is your infant. And they are scrolling Twitter. Jesus would have had cameramen following him everywhere he goes. And he would have been a very good user of social media. He understood the technology of his day and how to use it to his advantage. Period. Period. And he wouldn't just speak anything. He would pick what works. Sermon on the mount, same effect. If I am up the mountain and I speak, they will hear me. So he goes up, says everybody sit down, listen. That's what he does. He studies the direction of the wind. There was no microphone. The wind was his microphone. That's what he was doing. So when I have conversations with people who think, eh, we are adopting too much technology into the gospel, and eh, we try to water down the gospel by being too modern, I look at them and I laugh. You don't understand what you have been called to do. You don't. You are afraid and you are trying to preserve something that has nothing to do with the work you have been called to do. And I think one of the most powerful departments in any church today, maybe 100 years from now, it will not be the media team. But right now, I know a church here in Accra whose auditorium cannot sit 3,000 people. In fact, 
it will be a miracle if they can say 2,000 people. But whenever they go online, 90,000. You know who I'm talking about. They are online every day. They call themselves Share the Link. You know who I'm talking about? That's the power of media. They are church auditorium. I know where it is. It can't say 2,000 people. That would be a miracle. But they have not limited the gospel to their four walls. They can clock 90,000 eyeballs every night. I'm not talking about once a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Check, share the link and find out. And they are clocking numbers all the time. In fact, 31st night, they decided that the auditorium, they knew what was coming. So they went and took Elwak Sports Stadium. And even Elwak, they, they outpacked Elwak. Because of the power of media. What publicity did they do? Whenever they are doing their share the link, they say, 31st, we are going to Elwak. And they packed out Elwak. Next time, they'll go to Independence Square. It's just a matter of time. That's the power of media. It expands the church beyond the four walls. When COVID hit, 50% of the churches in Accra did not reopen after the ban on public gathering was lifted. Check the stats. Some churches had to re-evangelize their own members. Those that survived were those that were streaming. And the funny thing is, churches waited until COVID hit, and then they started putting resources together to start streaming too late. By the time you're done buying that camera, Perez has taken all your members. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the time you are, you are done calling Daniel to help you buy a camera and a tripod, and Charlie, what can we do to get those graphics? By the time I'll finish doing all that for you, all your members are watching that Hayward Mills. I can promise you that. Because the human soul is always yearning for fellowship with his master. So if you are not ready to give it to them, they'll go to the next best place. The attention span of the average human being today is like this. You delay, they are gone. You delay, they are gone. So you come to church, and somebody's job is to charge batteries. But the person knows service starts at 7 o'clock. The person comes to service at 7.10. The person was not here on Saturday to make sure that batteries were charged. What do you think is going to happen? It is not normal, though. No, it's not. I won't sleep. Because what motivates me to do it is not the same thing that's motivating you. You think that you are coming to church to come and help. No. That's not why you are there. If I don't do it, nobody will do it. No, that's not why you are there. Me, I'm just coming to help. Oh, usually when I come, there's nobody behind the camera. So I come in. I come in. No. That's not it. You've missed it. So I'll ask you to sit down. And I'll go to the youth church and look for a young man who is about 13, 14 years old. And I'll give him three months of training. And he'll start doing your work. Because for me, the guy on the other side, who has to hear the gospel, he's my priority. That guy is my priority. When we start thinking like that in the media space, especially in church, is that not what we do in the advertising space? In advertising space, correct me if I'm wrong, before they put out an ad or a campaign, it's not because it's nice for the one that did it all. How will the end user, the consumer, react to that advert? What message am I trying to send? So if you do an ad that is nice for you and your colleagues in your office, and the Makola woman does not understand it, but the product you are selling is for the Makola woman, you have failed. It doesn't matter. Your ad will be the nicest cinematographic work, nice camera angles, beautiful sound music, everything. But if you are selling, what you say, Omo? How many times do you wash? <laughs> the Makola woman and her children, they are the ones that need to watch that one. And she doesn't get the message. Zero. Zero. So for me, my heartbeat is the one that we need to package the gospel for, for him to either get saved, receive their healing, not miss their day of fellowship with their creator, that guy is my priority. If you start thinking like that, Nobody will ever have to call you to attend a, a training workshop. You, you won't come after 12 o'clock when we are supposed to start at 12, regardless of what the reason could be. If you will not be late to the airport, hey, but when you have to go to church, it's a different conversation. It's just an issue of priority. And you see, when something becomes valuable to you, believe me, you will leave everything and chase it with everything you have until it becomes a love affair between you 
and the purpose for which you are doing it, you will always have an excuse. Because let's face it. See, if I don't go to church, church will still happen. Church will still happen. If I don't go, the number of people we have there, oh, church will still happen. It might not be at a certain level, but church will still happen. I, I chase excellence. I chase excellence. So probably if I'm not there, a, little, a few things will go, but church will still happen. So I can find an excuse not to be there. Right? Yeah. The reason why the excuses come to us so easily and we, are, we don't take, especially the work we do in the media team at that level is because it's not a lab affair. It's not a matter of agency. If you look at it from that angle, that the gospel getting to that guy is probably the only thing that's going to save his life. Your attitude will be different. One day I had a dream. Should I call it a dream? I think I was awake, but I was seeing a vision. God took my spirit and took me to another country. And I was walking behind a young man. I, I literally was walking behind a young man. I literally was walking behind a young man. And he told me, pray for this guy. Because he is hungry and he's about to go and steal and they'll kill him. And I started crying. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. I haven't seen anything about it online. I don't know who the guy is. I don't know why I had that vision. Nothing. But that could happen. That God could take my spirit and take me elsewhere and say, pray for this guy. He's about to make a very big mistake. Later, when I was thinking about the whole thing, I was like, why is this guy so important? Is it probably because maybe he's the next Duncan Williams? And God would make sure that he doesn't die that day so that he could become a great man of God and probably share the gospel with the rest of the world? Is it probably because he's the next Billy Graham? Is it probably because he's the next Smith Wigglesworth or something? You, you, you get what my thought process became. Whenever service goes online, and someone gets to watch it, you probably have become the reason why a life was not lost. That's how I think about it. That's what motivates me. It's a matter of agency for me that I could be the reason why someone will receive their healing. I could be the reason. They will never see me. They will never know me. That's not my motivation. I'm not interested in getting popular. No. No. No, 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 no. No. No, I know. Yes, Ghana, you ding. If you don't do a lot of small to get some money, Charlie, every day they chase church, what you go chop? I know. I know. But the Bible says, seek ye first what? You don't work harder than me. Hey, I'm a donkey. <laughs> I work very hard. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness. And then all other things. We've turned it around. We are seeking all other things. Then when we have time, we come and seek the kingdom. Hmm. I know this is not what you were expecting today. But because I know we have a few weeks to spend together, I wanted today to be like this. Because I want to reorient your spirit to understand what it is you are doing. We can solve that problem. We can. That problem of no matter how well skilled we package the thing, the content is not right. We can change our style of packaging to make the content attractive. Last Sunday, I saw one of the departments in my church start something. My wife was discussing with me this morning. She was asking me if I saw the video. The young so they had this young lady in the church walking around, crossing all my cameras. I was so upset. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, <laughs> she had rigged, um, she had rigged um, her mobile phone. You know these mobile phone rigs? She had put the mobile phone in one of those rigs. And she was filming all over the place. Now, as usual, some departments, when they want to do something, they will not inform other departments. They will just get up and start doing things. She was walking all over the room. I was like, somebody go and grab this girl for me. Charlie, she's crossing camera one everywhere. She's telling you can't do that in church. And then I, I saw the video. I think that was yesterday. My wife was talking to me about it today. She was packaging content for TikTok and Instagram. And it was beautiful. That's another way to go. So she will find a way to summarize the sermon in a very short video with audience reactions and those things. The usual stuff that you might not get if you're not running probably a four or five camera production. She, she was capturing it on a very personal level, on a very TikTok friendly level. That's what she was doing. Now I think tomorrow when I go to church and I see I'll not be so upset. <laughs> but I'll tell her not to cross my cameras. Yeah. Yeah. The first day the president lifted a ban on lockdown. I think that day, how many services did we do? If you remember, I can't remember how many services we did that day. We did two services that day. We packed out the first one. Yeah, that's how desperate people were to come back to church. 
But that was not the case for every other church in Accra. I told you, after COVID, 50% of the churches in Accra, they had to re-evangelize their own members. Not new souls, so their own church members. Half of whom never came back. <laughs> Need I say more? Yeah. That's the power of media. Church online. Church online. Eh? Share the link. Share the link is taking people's church members. Pastors are crying today because of share the link. I, I'm so happy when I see him go online. Like I, when, when he's online, I am so happy because I say, this is it. This is the way. How long do you think it will be before the next lockdown? Oh, it's coming. Oh, they've seen that it works. They'll do it again. Oh, it's coming. There will be another lockdown by that time. See, the effectiveness of it for those who are orchestrating those things. Me, I'm a big believer in those things, that, that those things are orchestrated. The effect of it is that we can empty churches. They will do it again. You think it's for nothing? They are coming for the churches. They will do it again. They will do it again. And when it happens next time, will your church survive? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So it's not about the fancy cameras and the lights and the tripods and all of that. It must become a calling for you. It must become a calling for you. It must be a calling for you as preaching is a calling for the pastor or the priest or... Yeah, it must be a calling for you. And you see, you don't have to stop <laughs> what you are doing, you know, to become... No, 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 no. No, there are people in my team who are bankers, doctors. There are people in my team. They do all kinds of things. Fashion designers, all kinds of things. You don't have to stop what you are doing. Just attach the same agency you attach to your private business. A little bit more, just to God's business. That's all. That's all. That's all. And I have seen God bless my personal labor because of the work I do in the house of God. When I started working in church, I wasn't being paid to do it. Yeah, I, I, just, I just want to help you to rethink this thing. So why am I doing it? Do you know that it only takes one person to repent for heaven to rejoice? It's not the day you bought your Range Rover that heaven rejoiced to. Or the day you, you moved into your new house, the one you built yourself. That, those things don't move God. Who told you God cares about your, new, your, your first $1 million in your bank account? Who told you God cares about that? Heaven stops everything they are doing to rejoice when they see that one guy has lifted his hands and says, I've given my life to Jesus. That is what moves heaven. Salvation. And if you are the facilitator of salvation, do you think there is anything you need God will not give you? Mind you, he's checking your attitude too, the way you do it. Not, you are not just doing it because I do my nyao be an you. Camera is even put the mammy Franco see on a man. So if I don't do it, nobody will do it. That's not what God is looking for. That's not what God is looking for. God is looking for men who will die to self and be dedicated to the salvation of other men. The Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. You may not be as eloquent as some people who can meet other people and convince them on the street to give their lives to Jesus. But you can help that guy who is eloquent to package that same gospel and put it online for someone to watch and repent. They are conducting an experiment with the chosen. They bring random young people and they come and put them down. They just sit down and watch, watch the chosen and then react to it. They go for people from neighborhoods where there are no churches. People who don't want to hear about Jesus. They go for those guys and sit them down and let them watch a few episodes. And then after that, they record a session of them interacting with each other to see how they respond to it. You'll be amazed at how many people are, are, are getting saved because of that. So imagine if Dallas Jenkins approached that work like the way you and I approach the multimedia work in church. Imagine if the director approached it like that. People are getting saved by the day when they are watching The Chosen. Yeah. You will see young people crying. I, I, some of them will start confessing things like, I don't know why I used to do this. I don't know why. To, if, if a man could dedicate himself this way to the salvation, you would be surprised. Passion of the Christ, they didn't have that much effect on people. People watch that movie and they get emotional. Two minutes later, they are back to their normal life. <laughs> yeah. They will cry and all that. They will do all that. Oh, 30 minutes later. I was watching one of those docu series they do on The Chosen about a family from the baby to the daddy who didn't, in fact, they didn't know about Jesus. They didn't want to hear anything about that man. It's not that they didn't know. They already knew. After watching The Chosen, their house is now a church for their community. No, do you know what it means, eh? For people to be going about their normal life, and then they hear of a guy, and they want to stop everything they are doing, and go and follow that guy. 
Jesus, he was an attention seeker. So yes, a few TV stations here and there will be credited to him. Some social media handles with about 5 million followers. The new showboy. Jesus would have done all that. Oh, I know for certain. Because he said what? Go ye into all the world and preach. Today when you are looking for people, where do you find them? Let there be an explosion on this street right now. All of us will take our cell phone and be checking what happened. But it just happened here. But we are looking for it online. On, on Monday, Monday was my wife's birthday. So we, we, we went and had dinner and then we drove through Legon campus to go home. And I think we stopped to see a friend or two on campus or something like that. Then later, I found out that a vehicle got bent just around the same time we were on campus. I don't know if you've seen something like that going on online. But I saw it online. I, was, I, I, I wasn't at the very place that it happened. But I found out, even though I was in the same environment when the thing was happening, I, I found out on social media. That's the power of social media. Yeah. Your neighbor could be beating his wife. You will not know. But if she records it and puts it online, you will now know that your neighbor beats his wife. Yeah. That's the power of social media. I passed through campus. I didn't see any fire. A day later, I went online. I said, oh, just around the same time we were there, some party was happening somewhere. Somebody decided to be silly and their car caught fire. That's the power of social media. That video, it will stay online forever. That video, it will stay there forever. 30 years later, I can still go and find it. The internet never forgets. God bless you. So now think about it all. If the internet never forgets, and look at how much filth is online, why don't you and I make it a must to carry the gospel into that space as well? So that now when you're scrolling TikTok, Instagram, wherever, it's preaching after preaching after sermon after sermon. I know you're talking, hey, preachings are boring. That's what I meant by you and I can change it. That's what I meant by you and I can change it. The young people at our church today, they started their own podcast. They didn't wait for instructions from those on the platform to do that. They started their own podcast, discussing things that affect young people and how they could apply the wisdom of the word of God to influence that. They started their own podcast. You can use, see, you can use, you can use content to pack out the church. Let me show you something. Please, are we learning something? You didn't think you were going to meet a preacher man today. Eh? I'm preaching too much. Let me slow down. If you can, open John 4.34. And then another person can open John 5.19. Okay, John 5.18 and 19. If you are there, can you let me know? Yes. By the way, before you read, this is what I always do. Every time I go somewhere to train people, the first day you meet me, it's meh. It's like this, no. Say, why is this short guy is talking plenty? But it, see, if you understand the why, if you, if you catch the fire for the why, if you catch the fire for the why, give it a year. Give it a year. Before, before um, share the link, did you know the guy? You didn't know the guy. Before share the link. Every time I, I see him online, do you know what excites me? Those guys are the back shouting. <laughs> I, I they like them too much. You will never see them. You will never see them. They are the men in the background. And that's where you and I are. That's who we are. The nameless, faceless ones. Nobody knows us by name. They don't know our faces but we are facilitators. We make things happen. I was listening to a man of God sometime this week, and he said that Tabo Mbeki visited an African country, I think it's Ethiopia, that they are supposed to be, uh, they are supposed to have the facility that houses Africa's written history. So when they went, the place was almost deserted. All of Africa's history was on a small table in written, some written on papyrus and Papers that are almost been eaten up by rats. And so when they enter the room, you know when big men are walking around, cameramen are following them. You know, like, listen. 
He said his cameraman started crying, put the camera and I say, Sir, this cannot be where we are keeping our history as a people. This is not right. Something must change about this. And he says, Tabu Meki asked the president of the time, he says, oh, we need you to build a proper facility to house our, our history as a people. And the president told me, my people, they need good drinking water and electricity. Maybe they see museum for your history. Tabu Mbaki said, okay, me, I'm from South Africa. Worry about giving your people good drinking water. I will build it here. So he did. The essence of this story is this. There are nameless, faceless people influencing big things in places that you, you can't imagine. This was the word of a cameraman that got a president to act. Do you get it? This was the word of a cameraman. The ordinary guy, you would say, that got a president to act. And because of him today, there is a facility somewhere that properly houses our history. It is the same way that because of you, that guy will never meet you. That woman will never meet you. That little child will never meet you. But it was because of you they got the gospel. If you want to focus on the fact that, oh, there are more cool things happening in other churches than they are happening in our church, that is why everything is the way it is. You will miss the mark. 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 Maybe it will change because of you. Maybe it will change because of you. Who opened the second scripture? Yes, you can read it. John 5. What do you want me to read the 4? Should I read the John 5? Yes. Okay. John 5, 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Mm -hmm. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, mm -hmm. making himself equal with God. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. Who thinks Jesus did not know what to say to provoke the Pharisees? He knew. I told you that guy, he was an attention seeker. <laughs> yeah, he knew. He knew exactly what to say to get them pissed. He knew what to say to get them to try to beat him up. And yet he will go and do the exactly that thing. Let, try it in Ghana. Go on radio and say, I will remove the president of the republic tomorrow in a coup d'etat. They will come for you that very minute. You will not leave the radio station before they will pick you up. And that's exactly how Jesus lived his life. Saying dangerous things and getting into trouble for it. But read the 19 again. See why he... See why he was bold enough to provoke people like that. Read it again. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Only what? Question now is, who is your master? Who is your father? Who is your Lord? If you can answer that question genuinely, then it should influence what you do. If Jesus is your master, what do you think he would be doing if he had the opportunities you had? If he, had, if he was in your position? Perhaps you went to school to learn all those things for this reason. Perhaps that's why you went to school. Perhaps you studied all those things that you did for this. Perhaps. Question is, who is your master? Is money your master? Then I can understand why you do things the way you do them. If money is your master, that's okay. Then you don't need me. Are you following? He says, what I see my father do. So question, who is your father? Who is your father? Who is your father? That's all. Are you with me? Who is your father? Okay. Right. Are you stirred up? Right now it is... 2.17-ish. So, we're going to take a 15-minute break. Then we'll come back. And when we come back, we'll get into media training. This one was just introduction. 15 minutes break. Then when we come back, we'll get into media training. Thank you. <laughs>